हेलो डियर लर्नर्स टुडे वी आर गोइंग टू टॉक अबाउट द चैप्टर थायरोक्सिन एंड एंटी थायरॉइड ड्रग्स फ्रॉम थायरोक्सिन एंड एंटी थायरॉइड ड्रग्स वी आर गोइंग टू कवर द फर्स्ट पार्ट ऑफ द वीडियो टुडे दैट इज सिंथेसिस ऑफ थायरॉइड हॉर्मोन्स सिंथेसिस ऑफ थायरॉइड हॉर्मोन्स इफ यू विल सी थायरॉइड हॉर्मोन्स यू वेरी वेल नो देर आर हॉर्मोन्स विच आर रिलीज बाय थायरॉइड ग्लैंड सच एज टी थ्री टी फोर दैट इज थाइरोक्जीन एंड ट्राई आइडोथाइरोनिन सो दीज हॉर्मोन्स अलॉन्ग विथ कैल्सिटोनिन सो इन दिस चैप्टर वी आर गोइंग टू कवर दिस सब टॉपिक्स एंड फ्रॉम दैट टूडे वी आर गोइंग टू कवर द सिंथेसिस द सिंथेसिस ऑफ थायरॉइड हॉर्मोन्स एज सच द क्वेश्चन इज नॉट आस्ट बट इट इज इम्पॉर्टेंट when it comes to mechanism of anti thyroid drugs point of view so thyroid gland role we will understand in this chapter then we will uh, uh, go through the thyroxine complete thyroxine which is important very very important from the exam point of view a complete note on t4 is asked then anti thyroid drugs anti thyroid drugs definition classification and in from the classification the uses important uses are about propyl thiouracil and methyl thiouracil so we are going to start with synthesis of thyroid gland today thyroid synthesis of thyroid gland before going to synthesis we are going to talk about the thyroid gland its location and all so as you can see here this is the thyroid gland thyroid gland location if you will see it is one of the largest endocrine gland which is located below the larynx this part as you can see it has been labeled larynx it is situated below the larynx and from anterior to trachea the trachea this is the trachea the anterior region of trachea and below the larynx this region covers whatever this uh, part you can see reddish color this is nothing but thyroid gland and thyroid gland is having two lobes one lobe and the another lobe and both the lobes are connected by this narrow band this narrow band which you can see here this narrow band is called as thyroid tissue is the uh, thyroid tissue called isthmus the narrow band of thyroid tissue is called as isthmus the isthmus is from the second to fourth tracheal cartilage so these two lobes are connected through thyroid tissue called isthmus it is located below the larynx and from the anterior portion to the trachea so this was with the thyroid gland location now what are the functions of this gland or uh, the synthesis of thyroid hormones is one of the major function which will look after various functions actually it will cover each and every means it it will act on each and every cell body cell as you can see the functions which i have enlisted here which we are going to highlight in our another video so to talk about the synthesis of thyroid hormones the thyroid gland produces thyroid hormones two hormones called as t3 and t4 along with another hormone such as calcitonin so t3 and t4 T3 is known as triiodothyronine tri for 3 and T4 is known as thyroxine or tetraiodothyronine now why this thyronine and iodo as the name suggests this is iodothyronine so T3 and T4 are composed of iodine so it is iodo and thyronine so thyronine residue plays an important role when it comes to the synthesis of thyroid hormones so you can see uh, thyronine residues which are connected together on that thyronine residue uh, you will find the presence of iodine and when it comes to t3 there are three iodines when it comes to t4 there are four iodines when we'll talk about the different uh, diseases or functions the deficiency will lead to the disease called as goiter there are two major uh, things when it comes to thyroid hormones functioning or dysfunctioning when there is a excess secretion of thyroid hormones the condition is hyperthyroidism and when there is a low secretion of thyroid hormones 
or deficiency of thyroid hormones the condition is hypothyroidism which are caused due to different various diseases like there are certain factors which are responsible for hypothyroidism and various factors are responsible for hyperthyroidism so that we all are going to discuss de in detail in our next video in humans the ratio of t4 to t3 is 14 is to 1 now you can see just now we had a talk here triiodothyronin so structurally you can correlate here see this is one ty uh, mm, thyronin and this is another thyronin which are linked together in the process of synthesis of thyroid hormones now we will uh, see in detail how these tyrosine residues are connected or linked and these are the iodine which i have highlighted when it comes to thyroxine thyroxine is tetraiodothyronin that means four iodine so uh, you can see here in the image first second third fourth and when it comes to triiodothyronin thyronine residues are connected and they will show the presence of three iodine that is first second and third so this is tetraiodothyronin which is also known as thyroxine and this is triiodothyronin which is represented by the symbol t3 and this is t4 so these are the two major hormones which are released by the thyroid gland which is located below the larynx and from the anterior portion or from the anterior region to the trachea this image shows us the synthesis um, uh, process or how the thyroid hormones are synthesized on which we are going to focus in today's part so first we will understand this diagram what is the meaning of this diagram so as you can see uh, this schem schematics like uh, the arrows see this part uh, which is labeled as endoplasmic reticulum so thyroglobulin we have seen just now the structure which clarifies that thyroglobulin means thyronin residues or tyrosyl this structure you can see in this structure so these are connected so how this endoplasmic reticulum processes to till the release of thyroid hormones the endoplasmic reticulum synthesizes rough endoplasmic reticulum specifically synthesizes thyroglobulin now this thyroglobulin which is synthesized it follows the secretory pathway thyroglobulin secretion takes place through various secretory pathways like by exocytosis it will be released and it will enter the colloid in the lumen of the thyroid follicle lumen of the thyroid follicle so meanwhile what will happen this this process has released thyroglobulin now right so thyroglobulin and this second process which you can see which is starting from here now see here on the cell the sodium and iodide symporters are located these sodium iodide symporters sodium iodide symporters will pass actively this i minus into the cell iodide so this iodide when it enters the cell and it enters the colloid in the lumen of the thyroid follicle through various different unknown mechanisms and this iodide when it enters the lumen of the thyroid follicle through transporter pendrin this is the transporter called as pendrin this i minus will enter the thyroid follicle lumen through this pendrin and in the lumen it will get oxidized from iodide to its oxidized state so this is the oxidized state i minus and this is i0 that is iodine this is the iodide this is iodine now this iodine will now iodinate this residues now this residue which you can see thyroglobulin will come again here and this iodine so now as we have seen in the structure that it is a combination of iodine and thyronin as the name suggests thyronin okay and iodine so iodine will combine with this thyroglobulin and when it will combine see this you can see this colored 
part circles these are nothing but iodine so it gets iodinated by the process called as iodination and this iodination process once occurs it will process further now this i0 which you can see which is nothing but iodine is very reactive it will iodinate the thyroglobulin at tyrosyl residues so these are the tyrosyl residues in the protein chain like approximately this uh, thyroglobulin has uh, 120 115 to 120 tyrosyl residues it undergoes the process uh, called as conjugation when conjugation takes place the adjacent tyrosyl residues will combine this adjacent tyrosyl residues will be paired and this thyroglobulin whatever this part is there it will re-enter as it has came by the exocytosis it will re-enter by endocytosis mechanism after re-entering by endocytosis mechanism proteolysis will occur by the proteases enzyme and it will liberate the part which we want and the another part like that you can see here by the endocytosis it enters and this is the globulin part now this thyroxine that is t4 which contains 4 iodine and the structure which contains 3 iodine this t3 and t4 will be separated it will liberate thyroxine and triiodothyronine molecule by the mechanism called as proteolysis and this efflux of T3 and T4 will take place through MCT that is monocarboxylate transporters into the blood. Monocarboxylate transporters are responsible for secreting T3 and T3 into the blood. So to summarize the process like see rough endoplasmic reticulum uh, will synthesize the thyroglobulin it will get secreted by the mechanism and exo fr from exocytosis it will enter into the colloid in the lumen of the thyroid follicle once it enters this thyroglobulin residue and the second procedure which is starting simultaneously by the sodium iodide importers uh, the sodium iodide importers will actively uh, allow this iodide uh, this iodine minus through pendrine to enter into the lumen now here the oxidation process will take place this oxidation process from i minus to i zero that is iodide to iodine will take place by the enzyme called as thyroid peroxidase so here you can write as tp that is thyroid peroxidase then this iodine and thyroglobulin residue will combine through conjugation conjugation may uh, this adjacent tyrosyl residue will get paired this one tyrosyl another one the pairing will form t3 and t4 now it is to get separated so by proteolysis they will get separated globulin residue will get separated thyroxine and triiodothyronine will again get secreted into the blood through the process mct that is through the monocarboxylate transporters this transporters and these are the symporters and rough endoplasmic reticulum these are the three important parts which are to be mentioned in the synthesis of thyroid hormones now as such the question on synthesis of thyroid hormone is not asked but it is important for you people to understand through the mechanism point of view now this is tyrosine residue just for your reference i have added see this tyrosine residue oh this ring and this nh2 till this part you can observe and in this image also you can observe see this uh, this ring oh and this again this second tyrosyl that is here nh2 you can uh, find so this tyrosyl both the tyrosyl mean between oxygen they will get connected and they will form uh, the hormones thyroxine triiodothyronine where there is a difference of only the iodines now this is the schematic the diagram we which we just now discussed see the first step rough endoplasmic reticulum will synthesize thyroglobulin then it will be released through the lumen of the thyroid follicle by exocytosis then the second procedure that is sodium iodide importers will release iodide into the cell and this iodide through thyroxine peroxidase will be oxidized to its oxidized state that is iodine this reactive iodine iodinates thyroglobulin from the first step and at tyrosyl residue this process takes place this conjugation will pair the tyrosyl residues and this pairing 
when they will again re-enter the cell by endocytosis, proteolysis will occur by the proteases enzymes which will liberate the hormone of interest that is T3 and T4 by MCT that is monocarboxylate transporters and this is the description this just now the schematic which we have seen in largely I have elaborated the points which you are supposed to write it in the exam first step rough endoplasmic reticulum then symporters then transporter pendrine okay then this conjugation proteolysis endocytosis MCT all these processes which I have highlighted so with this we finish with the synthesis of thyroid hormones that is T3 and T4 which will help you to work out on the mechanism of antithyroid drugs. Thank you.